Transform and attack! <laughs> Welcome back to the Tide of Your Vanguard. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about the Magic Square MS B58 Brontosaurus. This is our, their take on a very cartoon G1 accurate version of Sludge. And yeah, it does look pretty cool. It does look pretty good. We're going to do some comparisons on all this stuff and do some transformation. But I did get this from Show Z Store. I'm going to have a link down below where you can get yours TH review code if you want to help the channel out. But let's get into taking a look at this Legends Scale Sludge. How does it stack up? How does it compare to the G1? We'll see this and more. Coming up. Here's the box, and they no longer seem to be doing windows on the Magic Square, so I don't know, somewhere along the line that dropped it. Very G1-esque looking, I like the way it looks. You can see some stuff on the side here, and on the back, it's like a nice little picture, and works pretty good. Now, I, I do want to say, it's very G1, and it's very Magic Square. When it comes to the packaging, I like it. Like, look at the... Magic Square and the Transformers symbol kind of looking colors. All right, so here he is out of the package. And I think he looks really good, actually. The character itself looks good. They're, he's The plastic feels okay. It looks all right. And even though they don't paint it at all, it's the cartoon look. So I've, I'm going with the cartoon look on these guys because, first of all, that's all they're making right now. And I don't know if they're ever going to do like painted versions. But also because... Uh, they look good cartoon. They, they do. They do look very much like the cartoon. And with that, uh, yeah, you still kind of have some chalkiness to it and all that kind of stuff. It's the kind of magic square that goes on. But does it work okay with these? Yeah, it does. I prefer the toy look also. So I'm doing that all right along. We'll see a comparison to what New Age has done with the toy look and the toy aesthetic of this. But for the tune, yeah, that'll work. That works really cool. Some cool, interesting stuff they do with the accessories. So let's go ahead and just slide right into accessories. Starting out, you do get the sword, and of course, the difference between a toy and the tune is this is going to look like an actual blade on it versus just being red. So all the toy versions are going to come with some sort of red sword, and some tune version is going to come with something that matches the cartoon. The gun looks pretty cool too. So it's I don't think that it's painted. It might be, but it feels like it's just three different plastics put together. But maybe it is painted. But still, the gun looks pretty cool, pretty interesting, and the fact that this is kind of what always plagues Dinobots, even Masterpiece and stuff, is the stuff here that sticks up. It's not really kibble, but it is kibble in a way. And so with that, slide this over there. There's a notch in here to slide over it so it's not a problem. And the gun looks right. And so, yeah, that's that's kind of a cool, interesting little idea that they did there. Now, also, we've got some splayed hands where he could just be like, you know, reaching or he's in movement, his hand's just out. And you would have to swap it. Uh, so you have to partially trans transform it just to move that down to get to the ball joint. But it's like because the hand itself has articulation and then getting the ball joint popped in there. Let's do it from the this angle. It's a little challenging and tedious to pop it in there. But there it goes. There's your splayed hand if you want a splayed hand on him. And he could do some like crazy type of pose like this where you'd probably expect his hand to be open and splayed or something like that. So that's kind of the whole purpose of that accessory. We also have this uh, accessory set here. Now you have to put these little eyeballs in themselves and I guess the big ones on the right, small ones on the left. And they do have some little eye dots on them. So that's kind of cool. It's better than nothing. And we won't see that again until we get to the dynamo. There are the accessories, and I think they're pretty good accessories. All right, so the articulation on this guy is pretty much what we expect. Head side to side, you're going up just a bit. Down. Uh, well, look at all that down. You can get part of transformation, I'm sure. But anyway, we got the really nice butterfly. I think anything, anyone with a sword could have a great butterfly, but you know, you could put that hand on that gun too with the good butterfly so that works too and then we get in here with uh, 90 at the shoulder 360 on the range and that's a nice tight shoulder that's pretty good you can get some articulation out of this get it out of the way and do whatever you want bicep bicep swivel no nope. bicep swivels at the elbow elbow swivel elbow swivel and then the hand as you can see the splayed ones have some in and out i don't think 
that the unsplayed ones, they just are plugged in there. So they're on a ball joint, but the splayed ones, you can get quite a bit more range, like a, like a stop hammer time kind of thing going on there. We have a waist swivel, ab crunch, ab crunch, magic square has to have an ab crunch it's just the way they work i mean i don't know if their secrets do or not. i don't own their secrets but do their secrets have ab crunch that'd be an interesting question uh we can do like some showgirls thing going on right there with uh, with that hip hiding hip flap love it they keep doing that that's uh great this is good out to a little bit past the 90 and then uh thigh swivel built in <laughs> quite a bit and then double joints double joints so that's pretty good and then the foot so the whole foot is moving around and you can get a little bit up and down on the toe and all that kind of stuff and so you get that range you can do all that with your figure all right so here he is next to a g1 now, of course my g1's not that great i got him for like five bucks way back in the day it took me a while to actually find a decent sludge that wasn't broken uh when i was collecting back in the day but anyhow as you can see you could swap these out so legends scale dinos scale with g1 and that's another one of many 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 of these legend scale figures that scale really well with g1 and to further prove that point here is the new age we're gonna do a little bit more in-depth new age comparison but just kind of show that either one of them would scale with your g1 collection and to get some really good click picture for the thumbnail i just noticed a little panel came undone in there i guess that's uh, that is the thing it is what it is but these do look pretty good side by side here, but I will point out that the paint on the New Age on the right here is vastly superior. So New Age, Magic Square, and this is what I like. I like the toy look the most, and we get the best toy look, I believe, from the, the New Age. But I do like this, this tune look too. So, I mean, there's both of them look pretty good in their own respect, and we can kind of zoom in a little bit so you can see the differences in the heads if they can is that clear enough okay i think it's clear enough now there is some difference in the head and yes this does look very much more cartoon and that does look very much more toy and i'm pretty sure you got a different head going with the new age if you went with their cartoon one too so good looking overall let's see how they clean up in the back versus each other and both clean i mean they're both clean they're both great options i it's really how do you recommend one over the other i mean i kind of feel like new age in a way is winning this battle but but magic square holds its own too so both similar price points and both very very good here's new age grimlock and new age uh cartoon version of swoop should have got the toy version too of that but i'm sure we'll get a toy version swoop with Magic Square pretty soon. Anyway, that's so how those look. Here's next to the Power of the Primes. Yeah, I'm kind of back and forth on what side I put this figure on, but Power of the Primes, what I never really was too excited about the Power of the Primes. I mean, I was excited they were making them, but the combining gimmick made them not so great. They could have been great, but they're not so great. Anyway, and just kind of a standard comparison to Prime and Hound. That's how it looks. Does it look good to you? Now, as for transformation, it's kind of a goofy transformation, and it breaks apart, spreads apart, but let's tuck these hands away. Let's do the things that we can do quick and easy and get it out of the way, and then it's kind of crazy how it just, you open it up. I guess we need to get a little bit of room in there, and it just opens all up. Untab those tabs there, and then... I'm going to pull it all out here. And then this is going to rotate. And we're going to bring these up and in. Let's just do that on both sides. Get this flipped around. And we're going to get it ready to go up and in. We 
go. Now we're going to fold these flaps in on this, fold this over, and get this sort of positioned for when we get it all put together here in a bit. These uh, butterfly shoulders are a bit of a pain. Okay, so we've got that all just sort of sorted. We're going to mess more with that here in a bit, and we'll do the head in the end because uh, that neck's kind of, it's the telescoping neck. All right, let's get down here to the lower legs and they've got a lot going on a lot of fun stuff going on here we're going to open this up and then we are going to flip this around we are going to disconnecting this isn't as simple as just pulling it you got to kind of lift up on it to disconnect that part of it now let's try to keep all of this in frame and perspective of what's going on with all of this uh, we do need to flip this around and up into the cavity there and then we are going to notch this section out just one so it kind of tucks in to look more streamlined it notches out to be more part of this so how it should be and then this is going to be like a folding piece in the end well, you got to look at something like this you're going to rotate it at the knee and then fold it around like so and we've got that going on with it and then fold this in here and we'll do all that same stuff on on the other side look at that ta tab line up all right so doing all that again on the other side we are going to open up this panel here and then we need to come down here and open up this panel and get some way to work here we're going to move this to the outside hello to the outside there we are going to flip this toe around flip, flip this toe goes into here and we got that done we're gonna open this tail up gonna go up here we're gonna take this tail tip out tip your tail out come on you can go there it goes and then we'll start to close that, that up but we're going to do the whole flip the knee around and it's so it gets a little trickier once you start doing the other side like this All right, making sure the foot's positioned properly so you could get it to close. So that's how the foot should look in there. And then we're closing it up and yeah, it's starting to look like a mess. So we gotta get the inside panel to go there. And oh, that's supposed to go in that direction. And we're getting close, get the tail out of the way and we can start tabbing it in. Yes, yeah, probably not the most uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know, the best I could have probably shown a little bit better than that. Then we want to get these mushroom tabs together. Let's mushroom tab them together. I kind of feel like, now I'm looking at it, I'm not really seeing where, but I kind of feel like there should be one more tab panel or something to fold out that I'm not seeing. I'll show you where here in a second, but get these in. All right, well, let's get these two tabs here need to go in to make that space. I guess that's a, you got to get those tabbed in first right there before this will close up properly. Well, it wasn't lining up because the tabs weren't tabbed in. Interesting how you have to have every little piece just right, which is kind of cool. Now it's looking nice and clean. Nice and clean. We can strangely rotate it. All right, now we got a lot more stuff going on up here that we have to tend to. All right, so this is where we kind of left off with the upper body, now we're kind of back to it. Be Grimlock, no see nothing. All right, let's uh, get this done. So one of the challenges right here is the fact that you're going to be turning this really tight shoulder joint, which is tight so it can hold up the guns and stuff. But you need to get it up. And then let's get them both up. That one's not as tight. And then you also have butterflies to attend with. So you have to get all of this aligned just right. It sort of tabs in, and then this folds over. So it has the room and the space, but it's... There we go. It's kind of like that. Kind of like that. 
kind of sorta. And then our next step, so I've got all that aligned just right, is to lift these up and over. And make sure I got all that just right. Up and over. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Oh. So I wanna show up this angle. So the reason that the, the the way the whole thing is is so that it just fits in just right like that. That's how it's supposed to fit in. I'm gonna bring the other one up and do the same exact thing on the other side. Hello from the other side. So the, it matters that it's all positioned correctly so it all fits perfectly. And it's just interesting, but there's so many moving parts. Just getting all the moving parts aligned just right. And then once you get that solid tab in there, and then you have, oh, oh, you have mushrooms on the sides. Come on. I guess I shouldn't have tabbed those in yet. It's always satisfying to tab stuff in. You got to get the mushrooms in first. Which, I mean, that's it's smart that they use the mushrooms, but it is a challenge sometimes. Because they will lock in place better than just a, a simple tab into a tab. Mushroom that in. Good. Good and mushroomed in. There we go. And we fold this over. It double locks it in place. Now, we've got some stuff going on with this head. It's real simple. You just kind of pull it out and extend the neck, which is smart, actually. Never said magic square wasn't smart. And then let's see, we have got to get this aligned just right itself too. There's two more mushroom tabs. Pull all that in. All right. So as I was talking about having all this uh, properly aligned, if something come out of alignment with like 42 joints in there, just push in on these. Just push in on that. Hold this tight. Push in on these. Creates the space. Lift the head up just a little bit. There's little tabs here to hold that in place. And then. Voila, here comes the head. Again, I still didn't get it just tight. I think there's it's a little gappier than it should be, but anyway, let's move on. The legs are real simple. You just kind of fold them out and make the feet and fold them out and make the feet. We're almost there. I don't remember New Ages being quite this involved, but it's involved. Now, for this one, you're going to pull it out and then you're going to rotate it and then put it out uh, a little bit more complex on the back not sure why they didn't just follow what they did at the front but maybe it's a stability issue engineering wise it gives it a little bit more stability that's probably it it does feel a little tighter that's why they did it. anyway there you go one thing about these third-party transformers is you start to get to know what they the designers how they kind of think you sort of can anticipate how it's going to go based on how they think but Anywho, it's uh, yeah, it's kind of cool, kind of cool looking. You do have weapon storage on those holes on the back if you choose to, but I doubt anybody is going to do that. Aside from maybe the gun, the gun kind of looks like it belongs there. But uh, let's. It is made to do that one pose, and it keeps wanting to go to that one pose. But we'll get into that. So this is the cartoon version, very cartoony. It looks pretty good. I like it. Uh, I, I didn't have any back metal, some of the parts, and I'm probably, it's probably me not having something perfectly aligned inside there, but I'm not too worried about it. I still think it looks pretty good, and we'll do some comparisons with it to, uh, the Grimlock and stuff, but, yeah, pretty nice looking cartoon version of Sludge, and, yeah, he looks good. He, it, it's, it's great. I prefer back metal, though, you know, I mean, I do, but I'm, I'm putting in a mindset, I'm getting a tune version, and I'm getting a toy version and I'll be happy with both. So let's get into a little bit of articulation that it has. Your head can go side to side and back and forth, up and down. I broke the jaw. He's got this in here, which you could stick the sword if you want to. It's a thing. Eyeballs can pop off. Doesn't have the swappable, like changeable eyeballs, but we'll get into the accessories here in just a minute, which I guess, why? Why not just do it now, huh? this is articulation point so it covers up the old eyes paint a little bit to show you these new goofy eyes but um, let's see not much more articulation in that neck there that's it really just what you got going on up here uh, the leg out up and it's kind of a loose joint right there same thing on the back. You On the back, though, you do get an extra little bit going on, which is why... So that's why they had that extra part to the transformation. And you get some more stuff with the foot. 
and I don't know, you get a little bit of movement in the foot in the front too. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference in display. And of course you could do this, which is what the whole gimmick is. That's articulation for you. All right, so here he is compared to the OG G1. Now the G1, of course, is the toy version because that's what got us all hooked back in the day. But, you know, it is kind of strange, but yet fun and satisfying looking at just little things like the, the color details and stuff on this guy to make it look a little bit more cartoon and then to tighten one thing up to make it look better and then something else pops up. Uh, so it's, it looks good. It's pretty cool overall. And then let's get in the me Grimlock see nothing. But here's where we are so far. So we got Grimlock and we've got Sludge. And there it is. Pretty good. And they fit in with your toy. They fit in with the G1. And they look good as a nice little team. What we've got so far. Let's compare it to some other stuff. There's Prime, there's Hound. I guess I should have had a Wheeljack in here because he made them, but there it goes. Size comparison. Kind of fun to be part of a, a Dinobot War, right? So this is my look at the Magic Square MSB58 Brontosaurus. They're taking on a very G1S cartoony sludge, and does it look good? Yeah, it looks good. It, it gets the job done. It's very minimal paint, like Magic Square usually does. And they did make it look good. A little bit, I think, a little over-engineered in the transformation. But still, they did some cool, smart things with the transformation. And overall, it looks pretty good. So, anyway, I did get this at Show Z Store. And I will leave you a link down below where you can get yours. And if you put a TH from TH Review Code, that would be very helpful. I am actually planning on getting the entire Magic Square team in cartoon and the entire New Age team in toy and i think that's where i'm gonna stop with dino bots which i think that's more than enough dino bots to have in a collection but let me know what you think in the comments below like and subscribe and check your hanger out Follow strongest leader.